dang it. Hi, Bob Canote, Camp Chaos Chronicles, and what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about shop organization in general, but more specifically about a piece of equipment that we use to help us keep our material organized and readily available. And uh, if that's important in this shop because it's relatively small and we try to get a lot done with the space and tools and equipment that we got available. As you can see, everything's kind of filled up at this point. We've got the uh, welding bench back here that's got Champ Car and Texas XJS stuff stored all over it. We've got a, a cart next to it, same thing. We've got this right here, which is filled with Texas XJS items. That'll be back on the car within the week. We've got a Depression Era horse collar there that needs no explanation. We got this corner right here that has two engines in it, one that's ready for installation and one that's not. More on that later. But this is the part of the shop where it actually gave us the impetus to get started on some sort of a material storage scenario. Because this whole corner of the shop was filled with long pieces of material laying on the floor, some leaning up against the wall if it was short enough, there were plastic buckets all over the place that had different types of materials, different lengths of materials, kind of stacked very closely to each other, and a lot of stuff that really didn't fit any place else in the shop. So this thing right here, number one, it wasn't real safe. If you needed to get in there and get a piece of material, uh, a lot of this stuff was sticking up like little spears out of the top of these buckets. And the smaller buckets that had the smaller pieces in them, you really didn't know it was in that bucket other than what you could see at the top. So it became real clear that we needed to come up with some kind of plan. Uh, also, you notice that it's all situated right in front of the circuit breaker box over there. And it also made it difficult to get to the air tools, which you can see are stored on racks right there. So, what I began to do is to look at metal storage racks. And there's not a whole lot out there. Most of it is designed to store long pieces of stock, uh, like angle iron and square and rectangular tube, round tube, that sort of thing, or sheet metal, four foot sheet metal pieces, four foot by eight feet long. That wouldn't really work here, basically because number one, they were really expensive. Number two, they weren't real flexible in their use. And, uh, you know, it just, it really required that we build something that works for our situation right here. We needed to take all that stuff that was spread out over this corner of the shop and slowly, you know, spreading its contagion around, you know, a little bit by little bit, farther and farther every, every year, and put it in a, nice, concentrated, organized package. And that's what we, this is what we came up with right here. This is our solution to the problem. Now there are three sections, actually four sections to this. If we look at this side right here, you can see that this is for uh, the, the structural shapes of mild steel uh, and uh, some other materials. You can got, we've got the rectangular and square here. We got angle there. We've got some old angle that is off a piece of equipment we scrapped recently, exhaust pipe, and then the round stuff is up here. Now this is um, a little over six feet long. And we've got these four sets of pegs right here. The great thing about this is that as you cut these pieces of material shorter and shorter, they eventually get to the point where they kind of drop down in between the pegs. Unless, of course, you store them on top of uh, the longer pieces, which is really kind of inconvenient if you need that long piece. So what you do with those that are too short to store on this side is you bring them over here. Now there's six sets of pegs on that side. There are six storage units right here. Now they correspond roughly to what we've got on the pegs over here. 
what you can see right here is we've got threaded rod, solid round, wooden dowels, plastic round, the flying finger of knowledge. This one we've got round tube, we've got squares and angles there, mild steel, aluminum billet, and uh, some square tube there. This is for sheet metal scrap, and then we've got this where we store templates and other things like that for ready access. So uh, once these get to the point where they get down toward about one foot long, then what we do is we take and we put them under here. And these do directly correspond to the ones up on top here. And you can see that it makes it real efficient if you start to nest the smaller materials inside of the big ones. Eventually, when these get full, then what you do is you start pulling the short pieces out and throwing them away. So, really, this thing is sort of self-culling in that, you know, the material moves from the far side to this side, and the cubby hole is under here, and then eventually into the scrap bin. Now, if you look in the middle of this rack, you can see that there are two two-foot by eight-foot long compartments and these are for storing on this side right here it's mild steel this side here it's wood plywood mainly plastic and aluminum and um, the reason that I don't go for four by eight because I like the angle here first of all but secondly a four foot by eight foot sheet single-handed is kind of a dangerous thing to be working with so I either order the material up in two foot by eight foot uh, dimensions, or if I get a four by eight foot section in here, I'll take and cut it down the middle and then slide it in the rack. There's very few projects that I do that I need anything over two feet wide for. And if I do, I'll just pick a sheet up of uh, four by eight material specifically for that project. You can also see that we've got areas here for storing uh, odd sized pieces of material. Uh, these are pieces that are used for blocking purposes. And down here you can see that I store my pipe clamps, which are used quite often when, when we're doing large fabrication projects. There's really no good place to put them around here. You've got a wall rack that you can make, you know, to hang them on, but Wall space is kind of at a minimum here. Now, the way this thing is built, <clears throat> it was really pretty simple. There are four cross-sectional stanchions here that are identical, with the exception of the bottoms, because of the fact that there's got to be a perimeter around this thing. By the way, these are, I believe these are one inch by one inch by 11 gauge steel tube. And in between these stanchions, there are longitudinal members which you know hold it together basically space everything apart and so once I got all those units made and got those welded uh, up to a base then I bent up the sheet metal troughs for the two foot by eight foot long pieces of aluminum and steel and wood and that's really what gives it its structural strength is those two troughs once that was put in, then I put the floors in on both sides, uh, down below the main storage areas. And then I built this box. And this box essentially consists of a 16 gauge base, a frame that I bent up on my sheet metal brake, a big green unit over there. Couldn't do this any other way and welded that together and then welded into the dividers. And once I was done with that, painted it International Harvester Red because we had a ton of that left over from another project. That's why it's red. Another great thing about this, and this is true of everything that we have in the shop here, it's on casters. And one guy can actually move it around relatively easily if you're motivated to do it. And the same thing is true of both of the big benches and the, the green sheet metal brake back there. It's, 
you need to have a certain degree of flexibility in a small shop because if you get a big project and you got another you know another big project sitting right here you need to be able to make room for something else and that just really really works to be able to move things into the position so that so that the uh, the shop can be usable this has been just a, a huge benefit for us to be able to store a ton of material and uh, be able to get at it safely and it just really really works so there it is I'm thinking about taking these and putting these in the uh, on the website so if you are interested in something like this let us know in the comments below and we'll talk so this is Bob Canote Camp Chaos Chronicles we'll see you next time